Namaskaram. Namaskaram. My name is uh, Panayotis. Are we people of Western culture fit for Sanatana Dharma? Because you come to India and suddenly it's like you are a new universe. And uh, a new universe without any guide. I feel generally unguided. If there is not that culture of surrendering, because I now understand them, the, it's very crucial, it's very important. If that there is not there, everybody comes here, me and my experience, me and my experience. Um, I don't know, are we fit? Can we uh, become one with this? It's possible to learn this. It's difficult though. It can be quite frightening. But it is possible to learn it. So with the Western disciples, it has taken some years. 10, 15, 20. It's also a genetic inheritance, it's not just the socialization. But the fact of the matter is that if a person wants it, if they just want it, then it's possible. I've observed the westernized Indians the learning curve for them is very fast. For the Europeans, Americans, Russians, Australians, all the South Americans, those who have grown up in, you know, Judeo-Christian, Abrahamic, even Muslims, it's very, very challenging. If I take a Muslim who has grown up in India versus a Muslim who has grown up in in Germany, let's say, the one who has grown up in India will have it much easier. It's just because the whole culture is surrender-oriented. It's a very ancient culture. It's a surrender-oriented culture. And the whole world was like that before the advent of the religions. So it's not that you don't know it genetically, you do. It's just further back. So the path is a little longer. The question is that the person has to intrinsically decide, is it something I want to experience in my system, yes or no? If it's a yes, then it's... the European is very focused, much more than over here, or in the East as such. So then it would be... it would be taken up as a... as something to learn, and then it's learnt also. My Indian students, they just never listen to anything I say. Like, never means never. And the Westerners, if I say something, they, they say, OK, but then they do it also. So that is the other side of the coin. There is that ability to hold through. He's one of them. <laughs> That's the ability to hold through. To hold through, to take it up, to do it with discipline, that you can't find here so easily. So, there are positives also. You have to sense it. Do you feel that the path of surrender is your path? And then you just... you say yes to it deeply and internally. Otherwise, you're not going to experience that thing because you are... you're moving outward. Your entire culture, everything... I mean, what we have in the West shows us to, to go outward. We ask God, we ask government, we ask parents, we ask family, we ask society. But what is there inside? We are sinners. We are sinners. That's it. There's nothing big to discuss about it. That's what we've heard for a thousand years or more. So that's what we feel, that we are sinners. So we have to unfeel that. We have to take God and put him, her, it back inside where it belongs. And then start to connect. So yes, it's doable, but it's very challenging. And unless, unless there is a deep, deep, deep 
yearning for it. It's difficult, but then how do you have the yearning if you don't have the cultural context of that yearning? So you have to move into that state, because how, how can you know this truth within if you don't bend to it? How does it work? So what you have, like over here in Tiru, people in the seventies, and they are in an I am state, I am. But that's an ego state. I am is an ego state. Because who is saying I? Who is saying I am? It's the body saying it, without the body you can't say that. And the truth will not say I am. The truth doesn't speak. It is an impulse, it is, a, it is an eternal impulse, it doesn't have an identification. So the I am is a very comfortable solution, but it's only comfortable to a point, and after that you realize that, yes, I am, but I'm not. And by the time you're 70 years old or 80 years old, and you haven't been able to touch truth, you haven't been able to taste it, so instead of taking that whole I am root, it's also okay to just say, this, this thing here, this, this body here, is in surrender to the Truth, to the Antar Guru, the Antar Atman. If, if the teacher tells you, this body here has to be in surrender to the teacher, then there's already such a huge reaction then the false prophet rears its head up and starts, starts creating hell in the head. So at least then start to bend to the Antar Guru, if not to the Outer Guru. That way for Indians it's not such a big challenge to bend to a Guru, they, they're used to bending to everything, they bend to everything, trees and rivers and temples and gods and... Uh... So if you can't bend to the Outer Guru, then that's all right, at least bend to the Inner Guru. That's what the Outer Guru is here to show you, show you the Inner Guru. But without bending, without surrender, no Truth. I feel, yes, it's possible, but it's a challenge. It's a challenge, culturally, genetically. But you understand that without surrender, it's not possible, like how? People talk about Ramana, he said this, he said that, <laughs> but all those students to whom he was talking, they were there in front of him in surrender. And the ones who were not in surrender were the ones who were from the West. I'm not putting them down, I'm just saying, you can see it. Look at the pictures, you can see it in their faces. There are one or two Western disciples who had experienced surrender, but not the major part of them. So when they write about it, they leave out the surrender practice, and I'm saying, let's bring it back in. Let's bring it... All the teachers sitting here, a lot of you are teachers, bring it back into your practice, every day, big on the wall. Not surrendering to the suffering, not surrendering to the pain, not surrendering to that, that's the wrong thing, that's the ego. It's a face of the ego. You're not surrendering to that, you're surrendering to the Truth, which is exactly not that. And see after a while, see for yourself how it changes. It's interesting that you mentioned, you come into India and then there's this... What are you supposed to do in this huge anarchic mess of ashrams and gurus and temples and, and systems and... That is exactly the training. All of that mess outside leads you inside, because there's nowhere else to go. <laughs> Look at it like that. You experience everything, but your final destination is inward. And not inward into states of being and so, but no, it's a material thing. The soul is there, it's present, it impulses you. Go inward, find it, go with that impulse. Bend down, become an instrument of that Truth. I don't see any other way to live the Truth.
that's what I'm supposed to speak about. So I'm speaking this. It's not out there, it's not in the cosmic experience. That's a nice holiday, but you pay the price also for that holiday. The very question that you have shows that there is a willingness for surrender. So. Uh, there was one hand... Swamiji, please sit down for a moment, I'll call you. Uh, there was someone else here with one hand up. You can sit there, I'll call you after him, okay? Yes, yes, don't worry. I will keep time for you. Come. You can come. I'll take you after Swamiji is a bit in a ditter, so I'll come to you. Technically, I should take you, but yes. <laughs>